Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here at NAB 2016, and my guest at the moment is uh, Joe Byrne and Matt Schneider from Technicolor Postworks in New York. And um, let's kind of dig right in. You guys made an announcement not long ago about an expansion, a ginormous expansion in New York, 50,000 square feet. And anybody that is familiar with New York real estate, that is cuckoo. It's a big commitment. It's big. Yeah. So um, can you talk about why the expansion? I have a feeling it has to do with all the production work that's going yeah, on. Yeah, well, it's, it's editorial space, primarily collaborative editorial space, basically networked editing rooms. Um, you know, we've, we, are, we already have a big footprint of cutting rooms, probably the, probably the biggest. There's been continuing demand. The, the, uh, the market in New York has been very healthy. We've been blessed with a lot of work and a lot of really good work. And we want to meet that demand. And it's, uh, we found a, a situation that was really great in a building we really love that's a, a Class A building, which is unusual in our industry. Most everybody has been going into more industrial spaces, typically more downtown spaces. We found a fantastic building with the services that our clients are starting now to require for doing what we do. So the kind of redundant systems and you know, highly reliable building systems and support systems that we need to build upon in order to satisfy the requirements of it. And, you know, security things and other things that unfortunately are part of our lives yes. we've had to deal with. So we found a really great situation and building is really beautiful. And we're looking forward to it. We're just beginning to the process of getting ready to, to uh, welcome customers in, uh, probably in the next month. So is part of what you're doing here looking to fill some of the rooms with, with equipment? Well, yeah, Matt, I think this is a big thing that we talk about because it's it's a slice of the of the ecosystem that is has sometimes poses some challenges, and uh, I know this is something that Matt is obsessed with. Is, you know, the the cutting room has you know we used to have a a very uh, 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 static kit of parts that we put in these rooms, you know, facing an avid. And that is evolving a lot. And finding the right fit for that, what a what an editor, editor, producer, writers, uh, uh, you know, the whole post production team need uh, is um, is evolving. Yeah, it's interesting to think about uh, opening up uh, a lot of new editing rooms. Uh, looking ahead, you know, the, the human element of, of collaboration and of work in general, regardless of your industry, is in many respects the same. But the, the actual the physicality of the equipment they use and how it's deployed might be very different. Uh, so on the one hand, you know, on the surface it might look like the traditional, uh, you know, four-wall editorial model that we've had, you know, that we've been successful with for a long time. Uh, but at the same time, we're also thinking about how the clients are going to need to work very differently, and that might include really interesting things that people are talking about. Like it might mean remote editorial, it might mean cloud processes, it might mean, might mean data is in one place and the editorial is in a very different place. I mean, it could, it could be all these things. It could be some of it, it could be all of it, it could be none of it, we're not sure. Um, but the idea is to build a facility that's going to be able to um, kind of wax and wane as the needs come and go. And a lot of the success model has been the clients love to, this is their word, accordion. It was a yeah, word I had never yeah. heard used before yeah. in this context where there'll be two editing systems uh, week one and 20 systems uh, the next week and then they'll go back to six systems. Um, just because the, uh, the way they deliver content to, to their own customers, whether it's networks or, or OTT or whatever it is, that really dramatically changes a lot. Yeah, that, that kind of topology problem is kind of one of our big business challenges. And the other thing is, is finding the technology to support these ambitious new formats that these guys are working on. We have, we have clients that are working uh, thousands and thousands of hours of, for instance, uh, log-based material and 4K and now HDR yeah. material is starting to come into this and we're looking at that and we're saying, you know, our experience with Stereo 3D, we've been privileged to work on amazing projects in, in Stereo and, you know, Life of Pi and Hugo and things like that and we found that you really need to consider the finishing technology, the, the presentation technology early in the process, not just on set but also all the way through editorial. And if you can't visualize the final product, you make decisions in the cutting room that you may not, it may not be ideal. And so one of the things we're looking at is how are we going to support HDR, which we're already doing now in finishing. How are we going to move? How are we going to be able to have something that you can look at and and make informed judgments about it 
in you know and have in hundreds of rooms. You know, yeah. that's that's tricky. Well, you mentioned HDR, and I wanted to ask you about that because that's been a buzzword for a little yeah, bit now. So, in your mind, why is it so important? Um, what, I mean, the image itself. Well, what, is it's, it, what does it give to the viewer? So, provably and repeatably, the consumer response, the, the audience responds to, to high dynamic range imagery, and rather less so to UHD and 4K. Yeah. And there's a bunch of reasons why that is, and it isn't to deprecate you know, the 4K, there's nothing. The high resolution is, is amazing, and it's, there's, a, a, there's a lot of... There's a lot of good reasons why you want to shoot in 4K. I mean, you can totally understand that. But HDR is turns your head, and as a storytelling element, it's very powerful. So, and there's also some there's some economic benefits to it. It's relatively inexpensive to expand to uh, to an HDR workflow uh, from a from a standard uh, UHD or 4K. So there's some, uh, although. It puts additional burdens on us from a display and, a, and also from a from a um, pipeline point of view. It's um, it, it, it's a it's a it's a really great uh, it's a really great um, and compelling experience. So um, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. If people have asked, if, you know, is this just a, a, a buzzword and is it going to go away yeah. next year? I think we're going to be kind of in that thing that Mark Schubert teases about, which, you know, is this the year of HDR? We'll be doing this for 25 years. You know, it's the, as we have been for HD, you know, right. going back forever. So, in my case, back to the 11 to 25 analog, uh, to, you know, uh, 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 real to real HD. Um, the, you know, and that was HD, and it was amazing to look at. Yeah. But this is, uh, this, I think, has, this has real legs. And the challenges are many, and they're different for packaged content versus live broadcast. But they, um, it's a, it, it's something that deserves the attention that it's got, in my opinion. Yeah. Thank you guys for taking time out of your really busy schedule and sitting down and chatting. So uh, great to see. You. Great I, will, to see you. I will free you. You can go and, and buy things. Great, so thank you. thanks for coming. Sure. Randy Altman, Post Perspective, with Joe and Matt from Technicolor Postworks. Take care.